Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I'm glad to see in the house of God. Praise the living God. Stronger than the strongest. Part two. Stronger than the strongest. Some people, you see them as if they are very strong. That is the only, the outward appearance. But if you check his stamina, you will discover that he's a very weak person. People who depend on the flesh are not the strongest one. They are very weak inside. The person that is strong is the person who depends on the Lord. He said, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You cannot fly in another person's wings. You need your own wings to fly. And you need strength to fly. The kind of strength that God gives and the one that the world gives are two things different. I see the Lord increasing your strength in Jesus' name. Amen. I see the Lord making you stronger than all your enemies in Jesus' name. Amen. From the book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 21, Jesus called Lucifer a strong man. When a strong man with all his weapons ready, God is on house, all his good are in peace. But when a stronger man attack him and defeat him, he carries away all the weapon the honor was depending on and divide up what he stole. Anyway, you see people talking about a strong man, I want you to understand that there will be somebody stronger than that fellow. And the only proof is when you begin to see the defeat of that fellow. But there is somebody that is ever strong. You'll find him in the book of Psalm 24, verse 10. Who is this king of glory? The Lord Almighty is the king of glory. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Who is this king of glory? The Lord Almighty is strong and mighty, is mighty in battle. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is stronger than any other name around. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, his name is not only above every other name, his name is also the strongest name. Among all the names. Hallelujah. As you call upon him, you will never be deceived in Jesus' name. Amen. Israel could not settle in his own land because of the spirit of Lucifer that was upon the king of Babylon. Up until now, many people depend on that spirit. The spirit of killing, the spirit of stealing, and the spirit of destroying. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 5, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, the Lord has broken the road of the wicked, the scepter of the ruler. That means <laughs> the Lord mighty in battle handed the power of Lucifer. He break the road of the wicked and the scepter of the ruler. Lucifer angrily oppressed the people and never stopped persecuting the nation they've conquered. The Bible began to disclose Lucifer from the book of Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, New King James. New King James said, Ah, you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. Ah, you are cut down to the ground, 
you will weaken the nations. In the past, the king of Babylon, possessed by the spirit of Lucifer, conquered nation. But now is thrown to the ground, is cast down. There is a satanic army of Lucifer that moved from one church to another to scatter the works of God. There is a satanic army of Lucifer that moved from one business to another to destroy businesses. You may hire one of the agents and give him a job. His main goal is not to see the business flourishing. His main goal is not to see the business flourishing. His main goal is to scatter the business. The moment this fellow starts working with you, your business will begin to go down. There will be one problem and another problem. And he's making sure the business is going down. For young people that are not yet married, there is a husband from Lucifer, there is a wife from Lucifer to make sure that you don't make it at all in life. That is why I will advise you again and again that the man you will marry, the woman you will marry, determine also your success. If he's an agent of Satan, you will go after beauty, but you will learn a very hard lesson. If you're a married person, you say, well, let me go after this woman, let me go after this man. All these are the plan of Lucifer because his first main goal is to capture you. Now, you cannot capture somebody if you are ugly. You will use all the kind of makeup to look beautiful. Then you can capture the person. The first thing we say, you will create attention. You will create attention. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? I like your shoe. Even your shoe is a Chinese one, very ugly. <laughs> very ugly shoe. I'm sorry, I'm not talking to you. He said, hello, I like your shoe. Hello, I like your nose. Your nose is like the nose of your father. <laughs> so it's just getting your attention. When you go home, you begin to think, say, my nose is like my nose of my father. Then you go in the mirror, you watch yourself. It's just creating an awareness to make sure it capture you. And the moment it capture you, you are finished. You won't know how to come out. Lucifer, the Bible says, he weakened the nations. So he's not a small boy. It's, it will not take a small boy to make the nation weak. It will always take a strong man to make the nation weak. Many of the decisions we experience in the land is only the decision of one person. He will take it. And they will take this decision from the marine kingdom and display it in the land of the living. But because the person is eloquent, he can speak well. Because the person is wise, but with wicked wisdom, you say, ah, this is what we will apply for the nation. At the end of the day, you will discover that the nation become weak because of one person decision. The Bible says from the book of Isaiah 14, verse 12, New King James Ah, you are fallen from heaven, O oh Lucifer. If Lucifer has fallen from heaven, where did you go? Is he here in this land of the living? So you and me here, we need to make sure and understand that there is an enemy that was fallen from heaven. And he will use that wicked wisdom to initiate as many he can in his kingdom. Many of us, you look beautiful on Sunday, but you are not strong in the faith. I pray that the Lord will give you more faith and more strength in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. When a stronger man attack Lucifer and defeat him, he must carry away all the weapon he is depending on, bind him and possess your possession. Listen to me carefully. Lucifer is not a small boy, but an evil strong man. Let us count his wickedness quickly. Number one, Lucifer capture people. Number two, Lucifer angrily oppress people. Lucifer never stopped persecuting nations, 
the head conquer. If he arrests you, he will make sure he's persecuting you all the time. Lucifer weakened the nation, number four. Number five, Lucifer is the man who made the earth tremble. Number six, Lucifer is the man who made the world as a wilderness. You want your business to experience dryness. You want to make sure nothing's happening in your business. Number seven, Lucifer is the man who destroys cities. Number eight, Lucifer is happy when people are in pain and suffering from the hard work they do. Lucifer is the man who do not open the house of his prisoners. When he captures you, he's making sure he will not let you go because he will use his satanic technology to make you enjoy sin, as we said in the past. I'm just recapping because there is something new you need to learn today. Many of us have weak memory. What we learned last Sunday is gone. If you ask them, how was it the message of last Sunday? It was powerful, I'm telling you. No, tell us, what did he talk about? Powerful. So we need to recap so that you will know where we are going now. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ of Nazareth said from the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 29, None can break into a strong man's house and take away his belonging unless he first tie up the strong man. Then he can plunder his house. How can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first bound the strong man? And then he will plunder his house. Look up and look at me, everybody. Strong man, for you to bind him, you must be stronger than him. I'm not talking about physical strength, because if one demon person manifests here, we will need maybe five, ten people to just hold one person. Why? Because all these ten people are depending on the energy of the flesh. But if they are depending on the energy of the spirit, that is the Holy Spirit, if they depend on the Holy Spirit, you may not even like to touch him. You speak the word. You point finger on him. The glory of God in you will affect that demon that will go down. Amen. Amen. Now, there is power by laying hand. There is power by radiance. That is what we call the glory of God. This is what you need to be stronger than the evil strong man. You need the Holy Ghost. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. When you receive power, then, when, you rec when the Holy Ghost is upon you, the power of God will manifest. When the Holy Ghost is upon you, the power of God will manifest. It will manifest for your good. The Holy Ghost will not come to a proud person. The Holy Ghost will not come to a wicked fellow. The Holy Ghost will not come to another soul. The Holy Ghost comes upon the righteous. When the righteous call upon the Lord, God always answers. Jesus knew that my disciple will not be strong enough unless I empower them. When he was around, he breathed on them the breath of the Holy Ghost. When he was living, he promised them the Holy Ghost. He said, these people, I know they are not strong, all of them. Many of them are very weak, so they need the Holy Ghost to defeat the strong man. Jesus Christ said, burn the strong man. He did not say, I will burn the strong man for you. Read the word of God again. When a strong man with all his weapon ready guard his own house, all his good are in peace. But when a stronger man attack him and defeat him, when you depend on the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you secure your covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, automatically you become stronger than the evil strong man and you will defeat him. Hallelujah. 
Don't be a covenant breaker because you become too weak and the enemy will defile you. The enemy will disgrace you. Some of the strong men are men can that you see with your eyes. Because they depend to some kind of power. They may be depending on charms. They may be depending on which have power. But let me tell you something. That one is too little compared to the one Jesus has given to us. Raise your voice. Say this with me loud and clear. The name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is stronger than the strongest name of Lucifer. Lucifer may have a thousand names, different names, but his name is always weak. His name is not a name that is above every other name. The leader of the land can be possessed by the spirit of Lucifer. The priest of the land can be possessed by the spirit of Lucifer. People in our community can be possessed by the spirit of Lucifer. The high priest, Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and the other family of the high priest began to question Peter and John. By what power or what name did you cause the man who was lame from birth to arise and walk? Peter and John, in the flesh, they were not strong. But the God they saved was very strong. The name they called was the strongest name. The high priest and the ruler of people arrested them and put them in prison. And they began to question them. By what power and what name you caused the man that was born crippled to arise and walk? Listen there to the answer. In the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 8, verse 9, verse 10, 11, 12, you will learn a good answer there. By what power or what name did you cause the man who was lame from birth to arise and walk? Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit. Peter, full of the Holy Spirit. Now you can see that Peter is not empty. He is depending on the Holy Ghost. Peter, full of the Holy Spirit. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The crippled man don't need another story but power to bring him out of the wheelchair. The blind man needs power to open his eyes. Somebody with sickness in his body needs power to bring healing in his body. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit. Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit. Philip, filled with the... All these people were filled with the Holy Ghost and they performed signs and wonders. The first thing is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Say, Father... Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Don't ever in your lifetime look down on the Holy Spirit. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to the ruler and the elder of the people, this Peter if he's not filled with the Holy Spirit, we say, sorry, I don't know anything about uh, I also, I don't understand how this man came out. He will be afraid. When Peter was not filled with the Holy Spirit, he denied Jesus Christ three times. He put curses on himself three times. But this time, the history is completely different. He's speaking to the rulers and the elders of the people. Fearlessly, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then notice. 
you and all the people of Israel. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucify, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stand before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. If you, every one of us here, we have stories. Stories from the family where we, where we are coming from. Story the way we grew up. And yet many of us were rejected, but now you are too meaningful in your family. The same way with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. They rejected him. But now is the cornerstone. Is the one, the main pillar of the house. There is no other salvation that you can receive unless you go to him. When, the, when, John the Baptist, when John the Baptist saw him coming, he said, look, the Lamb of God will take away the sins of the world. Where do you go? I will go to the one who take away the sin of the world. Not only the sin of some kind of group of people, no. The sins of the world. As I say, I'm a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of our people of unclean lips. Have mercy on me, Lord. And God had mercy on him. I wish to go to a person that will not judge my sin, but a person that will take away all my sins, not only some. That person must be a very strong person. Because the strength of the devil is in the sin that you commit. The sin that you commit becomes a fatal ground for the devil to terrorize your life. But if you say no to sin, and the devil is despised, he cannot hold you. It takes sin to separate us from God. Sin brings separation. Say it with me, sin, sin. brings separation, bring separation. Between, men and God. between men and God. Stop entertaining sin. It will not help you. Believe me. It will keep on separating you. And you will see that these people were not happy with John and Peter because of the power they had. In the eyes of men, they were very weak. They had no title to secure their apostolic position, they were servants of God. They had nobody in the politic to fight for them. But look the way they began to say to them things that was impossible. And I know whenever I communicate with somebody, I know that a man without God is an empty barrel. A man without God is what? Empty barrel. The kind of information you receive every Sunday, every time in the place of prayer, don't neglect them. Now, whenever you are communicating with somebody, I will repeat this again and again. Understand that you may be communicating or fellowshipping with a carnal man or a natural man, a man that is not spiritual like you. So you need to learn. You need wisdom to handle those kind of fellows. Don't flow the way they flow because they don't believe in what you believe. You don't need to join them. There are many people, God has given them wisdom to create and they misuse the wisdom for their own personality, for their own gain. They will say, I will make this so that my name will be great and God will always come and fight. Because he's a jealous God. Right from the beginning of the time, in the book of Genesis chapter 11, verse 1, my Bible says, now the whole world had one language and a common speech. Verse 4, the Bible says, they say, 
these people that had one language and common speech, verse 4, they say, Come, let us build a city. Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Come, let us build ourselves a city. God is not part of it. With a tower that reaches to the heaven so that we may make a name for ourselves. God is not part of it. And any time you are doing things that God is not part of it, it will not go far. I give people wisdom. By the grace of God. You want to get married? How much do you want to spend the day of your marriage? If you will spend 10,000 rand, put 1,000 rand on the ground. Lay it as a foundation of any kind of expenses you will make. Amen. Amen. You give it to God. You say, God, I will spend 10,000. This is the 10% of whatever I will spend for my wedding. Then God is in the foundation of your wedding. Because when you invite people in your wedding, not everybody is coming to clap hand and appreciate you. Some of them will come and say, hmm, we will see where the baby will come from. Some of them will say, hmm, husband, we slept with you. Now you did not marry me. You want to marry this one. You will be important. You feel fine. Say, let's go to honeymoon. In the honeymoon, don't touch me. I'm tired. Because there is no foundation, no covenant between you and God. But our God is a covenant keeping God. Covenant keeping God. There is no one like you. Alpha and Omega. There is no one like you. Don't do business without getting into a covenant with the living God. If your business will take millions, eh, remove 10%. Lay it in the foundation of your business. God himself. I will ask you this question again. When you are building the house, you start with what? I cannot hear you. If the foundation is weak, do you think the building will stand? No. no. Look at these people, what they are saying there. These are people of the old. Let us build towers for ourselves. Let us make a name for ourselves. God is not part of it. And if you go in town here, you will see many buildings. Some of them is, nobody is living there anymore. It was only for some time. Now, it's a house of stories. Why? The owner did not lay a proper foundation. God is not part of the building. When God is in the foundation of what you are building, everything becomes strong. You will be bored. You will not be thinking, hey, where am I going to get the rent to pay for this building? No, those things will not come. Because you are very strong in the foundation. A man without God is an empty barrel. Prophet Malachi say, from the book of Malachi, chapter 1, verse 11, my name will be great among the nations. God is speaking. My name will be great among the nations. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, in every place, incense and pure offering will be brought to my name because my name will be great among the nations. My name will be great among the nations. Not our name, not the name of Shiko, the name of the Lord. From sunrise to sunset, the name of the Lord must be great among the nations. Today we have a lot of names around. 
And God is not a God of competition. You don't compete with God. If you say, I'm building this business to the glory of God, God will say, that's it. I'm part of it. To the glory of God, this month, I will make a lot of money in my business. God will say, yes. But if you say, this month, I will work hard so that I can make more money. God will not be part of it. That is only you. But if you say, to the glory of God, this month, I will make a lot of money. God will say, yes, I'm part of it. Because the name of the Lord must be made great. From sunrise to sunset. That was the name that caused a man that was born crippled to arise and walk. When you get in the book of Isaiah chapter 4, verse 18, the high priests, rulers of people, and the elder of people called Peter and John, and they command them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. Ah! That is the name that just caused the cripple to arise and walk. You know what was the answer of Peter and John? They said, judge for yourself whether it is right in God's eyes to obey you rather than God. We cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. We cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. Peter and John did not just hear the gospel. I thank God for you. You are hearing the gospel. But Peter and John saw. Think in the day of transfiguration. Peter, John, James. They could see Jesus. Transfiguration. They saw Moses. They saw Elijah. That's why they are saying we cannot help. <laughs> we cannot help ourselves to keep quiet about what we have seen and heard. When they saw Moses, Jesus, Elijah in transfiguration, they heard a voice. They heard a voice. This is my son with him. I'm well pleased. And Jesus told them what you have seen, what you have heard, don't tell anybody. It was an answer of one day when Jesus is not around. And that was the day after causing the man that was crippled for 40 years to arise and walk. They think about what they heard from God, what they saw with their own eyes. Jesus' clothes changed, it became like lightning. So you cannot forecast just the way these people are saying, uh, you are shining. We thank God for that. All the glory to God. But I need all of us here to shine big time in Jesus' name. Amen. Do, you know that, do you know that all of us can become terrorists in the kingdom of darkness? Amen. Anywhere you go, you are shining. All of us, we are shining. Why only one person is shining? Other people are not shining. Why? In the name that is above every other name, any garment the name has put on you that makes you not to shine, I remove it now by the finger of God. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. A man give make room for him. It is your shining that will make room for you. You are working with wicked people. They know you very well. They know this guy has something. But you yourself, what you say, blow their mind away. They don't believe what is coming out of your mouth because you are trying to please them. While the greatness in you is greater than what they have. Hallelujah. Amen. Peter and John say we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priest and the elder had said to them. What did he say to them? Do not speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. When they heard this, they raised their voice together in prayer to God. They raised their voice together in prayer to God. They raised their voice together in prayer to God. 
the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And spoke the word of God boldly. Speaking the word of God is the key that turns challenges to supernatural. Our destiny is settled by what we say. Our destiny is settled by the way we pray. King Nebuchadnezzar was also possessed by the spirit of Lucifer. And he was stronger than Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He want worship. If you read your Bible very well, you will see the Bible say, Lucifer want to sit on the throne. To do what? To receive worship. The same thing happened to King Nebuchadnezzar. But this one learned a very hard lesson. Not once, twice. King Nebuchadnezzar was stronger than Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He said to them from the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verse 15, When you hear the sound of all kinds of music, fall down and worship the image I made. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to deliver you from my hand? <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar was stronger than Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Little did he know the lion in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego arose and they told him off. King, with all the respect, we will not bow down to the image you have made. We will not bow down to the idol you have made. The God we serve will deliver us from your hand. We don't need to defend ourselves. Even if God don't deliver us from your hand, we will still not bow down to the image you have made. So they were confident in the God they saved. They knew that God will never leave you. They knew that God will never leave them nor forsake them. They were very confident. At the end of the day, you know the story very well. The king leaped on his feet. But before that, you have to take the strong soldiers to cast Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the blazing fire. These strong soldiers die. That means somebody was stronger than them. Kill them. Somebody say fire. Fire. The same fire that the Ignat, seven times hotter than before, killed them. And the people that went down there did not die. Because fire cannot kill fire. The king leaped on his feet and said, what? I'm seeing four people. Nobody told the king how the king of kings look like. How the Lord of us look like. Nobody told him. He said, I can't see the son of God inside there. Bring these people out. He called them out. He said, hmm. In this nation, let everybody worship your God. You defy the word of the king. You believe in your God. This God is a real God. The one that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego made a covenant. They refused to break the covenant with the true living God. Worshipping idols, serving idols, consulting idols is a sign that you are not standing in the covenant with God. You are breaking your covenant. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was empowered by the word of God. They did not seek any other person's encouragement. They said, we will not worship your idols. Just like somebody from today, you are saying, I will not sin again. Just to defeat the forces of darkness. The kind of faith Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego display. Receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. <laughs> The kind of confidence Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had. Receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeah. Our destiny is settled by what we say. 
They say we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. Our God will save us. This God we are serving is a living God. My friend is not a dead God. And he knows what you are going through. So it will take your responsibility to display violent faith. It is Jesus who said from the book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 12, from the day of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. We must be violent more than demons. We must be violent more than witches and wizards. In the way that we speak, in the altar of prayer, no one of us can arise above the way we speak. That you will tell you that a mouth that is closed is a graveyard. A mouth that speaks changed destinies. The Bible says, whatever you say concerning yourself, to the hearing of God, heaven will surely bring it to pass. What you say, that is exactly what God will do for you. King Nebuchadnezzar thought he was a very strong one. But he was not in control of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He began to press the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He said, God has sent his angel to deliver his servant. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their life rather than save or worship any god except their own god. Wonderful. Raise your voice right where you are saying this with me. From sunrise to sunset. From sunrise to sunset. The name of the Lord is to be praised. The name of the Lord is to be praised. If King Nebuchadnezzar is seen as praising God, what about you and me? Who knows him? I see the Lord filling every emptiness in your life with the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Another person that was possessed by the spirit of Lucifer is King Herod. King Herod was possessed by the spirit of Lucifer. My Bible says from the book of Acts chapter 12 verse 1, King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. When he saw that this met with approval among the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter. Also, this happened during the festival of unleavened bread. After arresting Peter, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squad of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trials after the Passover. You know, the main goal of Lucifer is to capture. When he kills people, rejoice, they clap their hand, he will kill again, and they will kill again. The church has been suffering the hand of Lucifer, in the hand of agent of Lucifer, for so long. Now I can tell you and promise you that they've come to an end. I said, the army of Lucifer has come to an end. Amen. How do I know that this one is in the army of Lucifer? Well, very simple. You say something good for yourself and you hear them opposing you. Right there. They will not hide it away. Tell them, my friend, I will be great. He said, hmm. where will you be great? Opposition starts from there. Hey, I will drive this beautiful car. Hmm. Even a bicycle you cannot buy now, you are talking about a car. <laughs> the fellow should support you and say, yes, I believe you will do that in Jesus' name. Then you know this is the correct person. But if you say something good to yourself and somebody oppose you, mind you, don't wait for big sign. Small sign is enough. Then you know I'm with a stranger. This is where it becomes very dangerous if you and your husband don't agree in anything at all. Pray together. Agree together. Make a plan for your children together. 
Make a plan for the house of God together. Don't do things by yourself. Agree, Annie, this month we did not pay tithe. It's not good. We are stealing from God. Let us pay tithe. Honey, I believe it is time for us to do this for our children. Let us call the children and pray together. Agree with your children. Then you will be, it will be easy for you to control. Mostly the children of today, the devil opened a wide network to bring them all in and finish them. But if there is a lack of prayer in the house, if people, children are not disciplined in the house, I can tell you one day it may cost you a lot. I know somebody. He's a young man, very strong. Capable of doing everything, but he's wishing his father to die so he can, they can sell the property and take his part of money. He even went to his father and said, uh, you guys are know that you don't like me. Let us just sell this property because I'm the firstborn. Give me my money. I want to go with my money and everybody can look after himself. They report this to me. I say, this man must be a fool. Your father is not yet dead, so we pay a lot of attention because your son can poison you because of the good. Now, if you are not connected with the Holy Spirit, how will you know? How will you know? You don't know what is in the mind of somebody. But we have the Holy Spirit that can tell you even what is in the mind of God, even what is deep in the mind of God. The Holy Ghost can tell you. Shake your neighbor and say, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, this is what you say. You say, it's reading my mind. No, it's not reading your mind. The Holy Spirit will take from what is of God and make it known to you. The Holy Spirit will take the message from God and make it known to you. You've given a lot of advantage to fortune teller, to musician. You, give, you, you, you give them advantage. You say, ah, let's go to fortune teller. He will tell you everything. But you don't know that the Holy Ghost can tell you what is yet to come. The Holy Spirit. What somebody is thinking against you, the Holy Spirit will whisper on your ears as I'm speaking to you now. You will hear clearly the Holy Ghost is telling you that this guy don't like you. What are you doing here? Leave the place. Anytime somebody will come to try to do business with you, ask the Holy Ghost, who's this? And the Holy Ghost will tell you, this is an agent of Lucifer. They work hand in hand with Lucifer. If you do business with him, you are finished. Now, it will be easy for you to say, my friend, no, I'm not interested. Amen. Amen. Many of us, we've put ourselves in trouble, borrow money in the hand of Lucifer. Now you are not able to pay it back. And you don't know that was the only way for Lucifer to capture you. So that you will never prosper financially. Today, praise the Lord, somebody is stronger than Lucifer is here. I command the case upon your life to break in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Break in the mighty name of Jesus, yeah. of Nazareth. Yeah. When the stronger one attack Lucifer and defeat Lucifer, you can repossess your possession. <laughs> I will tell you the story quickly. Somebody dear to me, he owes somebody, he owes an occultic man and for this fellow to put money together and pay him, he struggle. So we have to help him in prayer. Put money together. I and my wife personally was making sure we are paying off this debt. Do you know that the person, the owner of money, began to run away from his own money? So he's not expecting anybody to borrow for him and pay back. Because his advantage is if you borrow from him, you will not be able to pay back, then he lock you up. Then he began to work with your star. He began to work with your blood. He began to create problem in your body. That is what will produce money on his side. <laughs> we pray. We went in the office of this fellow. We said, my friend, we are not small boys. We, are, we came here just to pay this debt off. Take your money. Eh, eh, sorry. Eh, but I want to give you as a, an offering. <laughs> who's going to take it? 
Ah, we already know you that you are a wicked fellow. Give me what, what kind of offering we want to give me. We are not interested. Take your money, release my friend. He took his money and he cut off. He stopped communicating with us. With the fellow that he owe, he stopped communication. So you pay a lot of attention with this life we are living now. Now, any one of you is too friendly with agent of Lucifer, I disconnect you. Amen. I say I disconnect you by the blood of Jesus. Amen. I disconnect you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I break the psalter between you and agent of Lucifer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your children, not one of them will be initiated by the agent of Lucifer in Jesus' name. Amen. Anything they fed them, I command their children to vomit them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Herod arrested a man of God, innocent man of God. He cut off his head and people clapped their hand. He said, hmm, it's not enough. Let me arrest Peter. He arrested Peter. And this time, Peter was kept in prison, but the church was innocently praying to God for him. The church began to pray innocently to God for Peter. Now, this Peter, is shadow brought healing to the sick. Do you think somebody like Peter need your prayer? Yes! Peter need your prayer. It will take a fool man of God to say, I don't need your prayer. As Paul, he will tell you. <laughs> he said, for these people to hear this gospel, he said, doors are wide open, but enemy is not permitting me to go and minister this word of God. Please pray for me. That is Paul. God did extraordinary miracle by the hand of Paul. I need prayer. You need prayer. Let us pray for each other. There is an altar of prayer. 24 hours. Every three hours. There must be a group of people. What are you doing with your time? Don't just sit down. There is nothing that happened by accident. You come and you speak to God and God will answer you. You are struggling with your life because you have refused to give God your time. Well, you can reduce a problem of three years in three hours. Well, you can reduce a problem of 30 years to three days of prayer and fasting. Peter was kept in prison, but the church was innocently praying to God for him. The church. The church awake. They stood up and said, no. Let us take this responsibility. Then the angel of God was released. And guess what? Herod is a killer. When the angel of God came and rescued Peter, the four soldier that was looking after Peter, Herod killed them. Innocent people. Because they did not perform well. But they didn't know that somebody stronger than the strongest came to remove Peter. My Bible says, from the book of Acts, chapter 12, verse 21, on the appointed day, Herod, wearing his royal robe, sat on his throne and delivered a public address to the people. They shouted, This is the voice of a God, not of a man. Verse 23, immediately. Somebody say, immediately. Because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down, and he was eaten by worms and died. Now, if you read your Bible well in the book of Isaiah 14, you will discover that every death of a giant of Lucifer, it is always worms who eat them. Worms. You will discover that in Africa we have many leaders. The way they die, worms at them. And just to tell you that this was an agent of Lucifer. They did not die in peace. They die in trouble, in crisis. Agent of Lucifer. Worms always eat them. The angel of God came and struck him down. If you secure your covenant with God, what God did to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he will do it to you. Amen. What God did to Peter, he will do it to you. Amen. 
what God did to all these great men I just named now, God will still do it to you. Amen. Secure your covenant with God. Did we learn something today? Amen. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. What is your name? I'm Judith. What have you done in his life? You are not his God. Why are you possessing his stuff? Why must she have everything? She's always had everything. She's always been successful. Yes, because Be she's beautiful. Yeah, whatever. If that's what you call it, she's beautiful. Who cares? <laughs> but she has everything. Now you. The big car. Yeah. Then she had the house. Yes. Yes, and then the husband came. He died. He's dead. We killed him. Who killed him? He, Make sure that he dies. The baby we'll dead him. is gone, we'll kill, finished. Who we'll, we'll the husband? I did. You? Now she's got nothing. She even lost her job. She's finished. Who we'll killed the husband? No money in the bank. Who we'll killed the husband? I did. You, who are you? Who are you? I'm me. I'm the boss of her. What is your name? My name. Uh. What do you want to do with my name? Pow! Talk. What is your name? What is your name? What's your name? What's your name? Speak. What's your name? What's your name? Fire. Stand up. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Uh. You demons. Come out! <laughs> out! Thank you, Jesus. Stand up, you are free. Hello, beautiful. How are you? What happened? I don't know. Eh? I don't know. You don't know? But you're coming from the ground. What happened? I don't know. Who killed your husband? Eh? I don't know. Speak. I don't know. Who killed your husband? I don't know. You said to me that you killed your husband. Okay, it's not you. Those demons are gone, huh? Be filled with the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. (laughs) 
Who are you? Grandfather. Eh? Grandfather. What are you doing here? Why? Don't you remember me, Shiko? Eh? Don't you remember me? <laughs> Say it again. Don't you remember me? Who? Yes. You. I was here. What are you doing in the body of my daughter? What are the evil? What, what have you destroyed so far? A company. Eh? She won't give and get a cent. She won't prosper. How did you destroy it? How did you destroy the company? I just destroyed it. How? How? Yes. Don't you know? Tell me the technique. Ah. Speak. You, you are dead long time ago. You're still tormenting my daughter. Why? Why? She's, she refused to save us. How do you want her to save you? To be a sangum. But she's saving Jesus? Yes. What do you want her to mix with sangoma? To heal people. Jesus is the healer. Shame on you. Even myself, I can heal. You? Yes. Healing who? Healing people. Those who are sick. Jesus is the healer, not uh -huh. you. Not you. What have you done to the husband? Husband. Oh, eh? shame. Pity on him. Eh? Pity on him. Pity on him? Yes. What have you done? They are going to terminate his contract this year on June. This year? Yeah. I call you your... are the cause of it. Eh? You are the cause of it. The cause of what? Why did you pray for her to get married? The first time that she was here, you prayed for her. Yeah. So she get, she get married. Yeah. So now I'm going to destroy his husband. You are a liar. Yeah, I'm not a liar. I'm going to destroy them. You are a Both liar. of them. You are the cause. Yeah. Why did you pray for her? Why? But today, why you could not hold her not to come here today? You know where I'm coming from? Where? From Bushback Ridge. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. I arrive here Friday to attend your all night prayer. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. mm. Why you could not hold her there, back you, <laughs> not release her? You fail. Yeah. You fail. Because she's here, the contract will not be over. They will renew the, cup, the contract. Amen. And the business will prosper. Amen. You demons. <laughs> Out. I said, get out of my daughter. Fire! All over your body, from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Fire! Fire! In the mighty name of Jesus, I destroy your kingdom with the thunder of God. Fire! She was supposed to get a tender worth millions. <laughs> she I get block it. it. Even it. now they call her I release it on now. Friday. I release they it. want to give it. They will give it to her. They will, she won't they will, get it. Uh -huh. She won't. She will get it. She won't. I already removed your power. She won't. She will get it. Every time when she get money. She will have it. She take it to church. Fire! Come out! Out! In the mighty name of Jesus, house of Nazareth. It's over. Amen. If you have big thunder, come, come, let us pray. It will come. Amen. Then I will be your only friend. All the friends, you kill them. <laughs> Stand up, you are free. How are you? It's okay, my daughter. Come, come and shake my hand. How is it your husband? Things huh? are not going. Huh? Things are not going. Uh, no, no, no. Listen, listen. Listen to me. Do you know what you just said to me now? No. Huh? No. You don't know? Okay. I want to tell you the good news. Huh? That demons that block everything is gone. Thank you. It's finished. Jesus. 
Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Thank you. Hey, come out, you spirit of sickness and diseases. Fire! The mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You are free. Listen to me. I'm praying to you according to what the Holy Spirit is putting in my heart. If there was sickness in your body and the Spirit of God told me that it is sickness and you know it is sickness, please make sure you celebrate. Go down there, testify, say thank you, Jesus. You're free. What is your business with Sangoma? No, I've never been a Sangoma. I was only named after my grandmother. My, eh? I was named after my grandmother. That was a Sangoma? Yes. That's why I'm asking, what is your business with the Sangoma? Yes. What did your ma- grandmother tell you? There are things she told ne- or, I, eh? nev- I never saw her. You, you, they only named me after her, her name. And it, she was speaking Afrikaans. Sometimes she's, she's speaking out. Eh? Sometimes she's speaking here to me. <laughs> what, did it, what does it say? What did it say? She said, I want to stay with my daughter. The spirit of Sangoma is telling you, I want you to stay with my daughter. Yes. It's a wrong voice. She will not submit to them again. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I cut off every communication between you and the dead. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Pastor, when I pray something, there's something here inside. Ma'am. It makes me. You have to. It it turns uh, like this. How many children do you have? Yeah. How many children do you have? Three kids. Three kids. One boy, two girls. Huh? One boy, two girls. Good. Which one you are not agreeing with? Because you must make peace as soon as possible. With her? Mm. The firstborn. The firstborn. Mm. It is she, war. She hates me a lot. She hates you a lot. Uh, you she must took make... my money. When I, she borrows money, she doesn't bring it back to me. It's not, it's not that. It's not that. That's not the main case. Come with, come with her. I pray for both of you. Okay. You she, must open your heart. She you, is working at the prison. I, I, I'm also working. It's I, not a problem. I both of you here. must make a special day. Okay. You come for your deliverance. There is something wrong inside you. Even if I pray for you now, it will not come out because you must release. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yeah, you throw it away. It's not a problem. Just put it in town. It's not for the Sangomas. I know. <laughs> that, I know you like fashion. <laughs> Check my hand. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Call your daughter. Say sorry. Eh? Because it was not you. They see something wrong in you. They call you evil. Oh, they call me evil. Yeah. Oh, okay. And something wrong that torment them. So the entire family need deliverance. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot. God bless you. Eh? Amen. Today you will sleep well. Okay, thanks. Sir. That thing will not speak again. Amen. Sometimes you wake up, you don't know, but you are awake. Yes, it's all this. And you see yourself somewhere, you say, how did I get here? Then you uh, come back. And the next month I will be taking my pension. I'm 62 years old. You are 62 okay. years old. Yes. It's not a lot. <laughs> I'm 92. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks. This is the daughter. The first one. You are not the. F- I need the first one. The first one is under a case. Okay. Yes. If that you come with her, yes. we'll pray together. The case will be removed. She's not doing fine. Please She's sorry. bitter. She's. It's true. It's true. Eh? It's true. <laughs> is it like that? Yes. It's like that. Yeah. Yes. She feel like no one is care about her. Is that, she's under a case. When you come with her, we'll pray. 200,000. She borrowed 200,000. 200,000? She ate all that. She 200,000. Yeah. 
alone. She finished all. Yeah, now she wants uh, to somebody, take. somebody that is under a case, even if you give millions, it will blow them few mm. because mm. of case. Mm. Uh, if we pray for her, she will come back to us and say, ah, I had money, I don't know how I've spent it. But we did tell her about you, then she said she also wants to come. We is told it? her, yes. Is it? Yes. Okay. She said she wants to make the day to come. Good. Yes. Okay, tell her to watch us some more on the YouTube, eh? Just click Shuko Apuam, then uh, yes. when she comes, she's well yes. prepared. Yeah. God bless you. Thank you. God bless Amen. you, eh? Amen. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Martin of Jesus House of Nazareth. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Okay, next. You are free, my daughter. Leave me alone. I don't want any problem. I don't want any problem. Please. I beg you, leave me alone. Shiko, I'm telling you, I didn't come here for you. Leave me alone. Who are you? Uh, Answer me. Your nanny. Who are you? Your eh? nanny. Who are you? You don't want to speak. Fire. Fire! Fire! Your name. Who are you? Your name. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? From which river are you coming from? From which river are you coming from? I'll try that river right now. Who are you? Speak. Which river are you coming from? Which river are you coming from? I command your river to dry up. All your snakes to die. All your crocodile to die. I remove your crown. Come out! You don't have feet. Your back. You don't have eyes. Bima. Come out. out. Fire. Thank you, Jesus. Come out. Out. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Wife. Eh? They are taking my wife. I'm they are taking your wife. Okay, no. fight. Fight for yourself. Fight for your wife. Uh -huh. <laughs> Kick and punch. And uh, your head. Beat them with your head also. <laughs> and your belly. Use your belly also to beat them. <laughs> Use everything to beat them. Your head, your teeth. Bite them. Punch his face. Punch his face. Give him a killing blow. A killing blow. If you give me that blow. Eh? 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 Who's winning? Who's winning? Who's winning? Kingsley's winning. Kingsley's winning. Who's Kingsley? He's the new husband. The new husband. He wants to pay Lobola. Eh? He wants to pay Lobola. Take my wife. 
You, you want to do what? I want to take my wife. You want to take your wife? Yeah. Okay. Punch, punch. Use everything, your feet, your hand, your hair, your head, your back. Use everything. <laughs> it seems like you are tired. Do some push up, push up so that you can get more strength to beat him very, very well. Push up, push up. Go down, do some push up. Push, push up. Uh-huh. Leave my daughter. Your spiritual husband. Spiritual husband. Why one ruha? I had it like dreaming. One ruh. 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 Before never I had it dreaming. I could do me. I now do me. I love my life. That you know one ruh. Why? She said to me when I come to her dreams. One ruh. One ruh. I came side yaga. What some one ruh. She says at me when I come to her dreams. Who come in the dreams? I come in the dream. Want to have sex with her. She's, re- she's refusing now. She used to belong to me. When I want sex, she gave me. Now she doesn't want to give me. In she's the, telling me about the husband. In the she's, dream. She's giving fire. She said there's a fire here. There is can't fire touch there. It. Yeah. You cannot touch there. I can't touch there. I put more fire there. <sighs> Come out, you demons. All over your body. Fire! Between a leg. Permanent fire. Fire! You will never touch her again. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Fire! Spiritual husband. Now pack all your load and go. The pen you put on the back. The pen you put in the womb. Remove them. Take it out. Take it out. Out! You snake, don't ever appear again. Fire! Fire! Thank you, Jesus. Now, open your eyes. Look at me. Go, 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 go. Come out! Out! Thank you, Jesus. Out! Leave my daughter. Don't ever come back. The maximum of Jesus house of Nazareth. Fire! Fire! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You think it's a joke? You snake. Fire! Get something quickly. Come out! Thank you, Jesus. Go! Don't ever come back in this body, you snake. Out! Fire! Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus, house of Nazareth. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Fire! Get something. She will, she will vomit. Hurry up. Stand up, everybody. I send the fire of the Holy Ghost. I send the fire of the Holy Ghost. All of you that is there, that has been in the service. The same grace that manifested here is manifesting on you there in Jesus' name. Amen. Those who are sick, I command healing in your body. Amen. Be free from every demonic attack. Amen. The mighty name of Jesus, house of Nazareth. Amen. Lay your hand on my hand. You that is not doing well with your business, I command doors of your business to open. Amen. I command your business to be free in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I command your business to be delivered in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I thank you for your blessing upon everyone. Glorify yourself for what you have done in the life of your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. God bless you. Let us meet again.